Shantimarandas. Recording in progress. Ganan Jananjana Shalakaya Chakzuran Militanyena Tasma Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shanyavadi Paschacha Deshatarine Vancha Kaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Vayevata Patita Nam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasati Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So we're reading the Krishna book and this evening we're on chapter number 42 which is called The Breaking of the Bow and the Sacrificial Arena. So Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram had been brought by Akrura to Mathura. So when they got to Mathura, Krishna and Balaram told Makrura, you can go home now, we want to go on our own, and they went to meet the cowherd boys and Nanda Maharaj, who'd all come from Vrindavan. And we heard how Krishna and Balaram met different people. They met Kamsa's laundry man. And they got nice cloth. They took, the, they took many of the cloth of Kamsa for themselves. And then they met a tailor and the tailor made nice clothes for them. And then they went on and they came to the florist and they met Sudama, the florist, and he gave them beautiful flower garlands. So after they left the florist place, then Krishna and Balaram saw a hunchback young woman. And she was walking in the street carrying a dish full of sandalwood pulp. And so Lord Krishna likes and he likes jokes. He he likes to play to have fun. So he began to make some jokes with the young lady. And so he said to the young woman with the hunchback, he said, Oh, tall young woman, who are you? <laughs> Tell me, who are you carrying all the sandalwood pulp for? I, th I think you should offer this sandalwood to me. And 
Yeah, if you give it to me, you'll be very fortunate. Now, Krishna knows everything. He doesn't need to ask, but he just wanted to, you know, ask the lady just, uh, just, he doesn't like to say, he doesn't like to admit that he knows everything, but actually Krishna knows everything. He knew about the woman, who she was and who she worked for. But Krishna wanted to teach us that there's no, it's not good to serve a demon. She should serve Krishna and Balaram and she will get a good result from her work. So the woman, we usually call this woman Kubja. And so she said to Krishna, My dear Shamsundar, dear beautiful dark boy, you should know I'm working as a maidservant for Kamsa. I, I supply him sandalwood pulp every day and he's very pleased with me for this. But she said, now that I've met you two brothers, I think I'd rather give the sandalwood pulp to you two. I think you're better to get it than Kamsa. So the young woman with the hunchback was very attracted to the beauty, the handsome features of Krishna and Balaram. She, she liked how they talked and she liked their smiling and all their activities. So she began to put the sandalwood all over the bodies of Krishna and Balaram and she did it with great devotion. So Krishna and Balaram are very good looking and they were nicely dressed with colourful clothes. And when she put the sandalwood paste over them, they looked even more attractive. So Krishna was very pleased with her and he thought how he could give her a reward. So if you want to get a reward from Krishna, first you have to serve him with love and devotion. If you want to please Krishna, you have to do loving service to him. So this, this lady, the hunchback lady, she had done some nice service. Krishna was very pleased with her. So he pressed the feet of the lady with his toes and then he took his hand, his, the fingers, and he, he kept, took hold of her cheeks and gave her a jerk and he made her straight. He took away her hunchback. 
ืมแล้วกฤษณาเนี่ยก็ช่วยนางโดยการที่ท้องเนี่ยทรงใช้อยู่แม่โป้งเนี่ยเท้าแม่โป้งเนี่ยกดไปที่นางกดไปที่หัวแม่โป้งของนางกดเท้าของนางหลังคล้องด้วยนิ้วเท้าและใช้นิ้วมือจับแก้มของนางกระตุ้นขึ้นเพื่อให้นางเพื่อให้นางเนี่ยยืนขึ้นมาได้หลังตรง So now you know before she was a hunched hunchback woman but now she was made into a A very beautiful, tall, and straight woman. And, and she had a nice figure. She had big, nice hips and a thin waist and nice shaped breasts. จากผู้หญิงหลังคลองจากหญิงสาวหลังคลองกลายเป็นหญิงสาวสวยงามที่มีลำลำตัวตรงสะโพกผายเอวบางงดงามก็น่าอกสมส่วน And because she'd been touched by Lord Krishna's hands, she became the most beautiful girl among all women. และเป็นภาวนาเนี่ยได้สัมผัสด้วยกฤษณาได้สัมผัสนางเนี่ยทำให้นางกลายเป็นผู้หญิงที่สวยที่สุดในระแวกนั้นเพราะฉะนั้นเราสามารถดูได้จากสถานการณ์นี้ก็คือการเวลาเรารับใช้กฤษณาเนี่ยเราได้รับประโยชน์มากมายมหาศาลมากมายกว่าที่เราคิดไว้หลายเท่า So devotional service is so powerful anybody who does it they get all good qualifications การปฏิบัติการวิจารณ์เสียสารับใช้นี้มีพลังอำนาจหาศาลใครก็แล้วแต่ที่มาปฏิบัติการรับใช้นี้เนี่ยเขาจะได้รับประโยชน์อย่างมาก So Krishna was attracted to this hunchback woman not because she was beautiful but because of her service กฤษณาเนี่ยชอบผู้หญิงหลังคลองคนนี้ไม่แต่คุณสมบัติที่กฤษณาเห็นเนี่ยไม่ใช่ว่าเขาสวยแล้วก็น่าดึงดูดอะไรแต่เป็นเพราะว่าเขาเนี่ยมีความรักและการอุทิศตนให้กับพระองค์เพราะว่าเขาเนี่ยได้ทำการรับใช้ให้กับกฤษณาเนี่ยทำทำให้คนตอบรับของเขาเนี่ยเขาได้กลายเป็นหญิงสาวสวยงามแล้วก็มีความรักและการอุทิศตนให้กับพระองค์ So a devotee doesn't have to be beautiful or have any special qualifications But just because they do service for Krishna and because they become Krishna conscious, then they will automatically become attractive and qualified. So, by Krishna's mercy, she became a very beautiful young woman, and she became very grateful to Krishna. And she was attracted to the beauty of Krishna. So she took hold. She got hold of a part of Pete Krishna's cloth, and she began to pull it. And she began to smile in a lusty manner, and she she admitted that she was feeling very agitated due to her lusty desires. She forgot that she was actually on the street, out in the public, in the street, in front of many people, and in front of Krishna's older brother Balaram and all of Krishna's friends. So she said to Krishna, 
you know, I, I cannot leave you. You should come to my place. I want you to come to the place where I stay. I'm very attracted to you. And so you you're you're the best of all men so you should be kind to me and so she was saying to Krishna you know you come to my home and satisfy my lusty desires so Krishna felt uncomfortable, he was a little embarrassed because his older brother Balaram was there. But he knew the girl was very simple and attractive. So he just smiled at her and he looked at the cowherd boys and then he said to her, he said, Oh, my dear beautiful girl, I'm very pleased by your invitation. I must come to your home, but I have some important business I have to do first. A nice looking girl like you is the best, it's the best, uh, it's the greatest happiness for people like us, people like me and my friends, Krishna said. And we're away from home and we're not married yet either. So Krishna at this time, he still had not married anybody, he was just a young boy, young man. But Krishna said, such, having, if I had such a nice girlfriend like you, certainly I'd feel relief from all agitation of the mind. So in this way Krishna was satisfying the girl, he spoke nice words to her and then he left her there. So he came down the street where all the, and all the people, all the citizens of Mathura, they were all prepared to receive Krishna, to welcome him. And they had nice presentations of flowers and sandalwood pulp and betel nuts. So all the people in the marketplace, all the businessmen in the marketplace, they all worship Krishna and Balaram with great respect. And all the ladies in the surrounding houses, they all came to see him. Uh, 
แล้วก็ทุกคนที่อยู่รอบข้างบ้านในหมู่บ้านในตลาดนั้นก็ทุกคนก็มาเพื่อที่จะเห็นพิชนาดูพิชนา When the young ladies came, the young ladies came. They saw how handsome and he was, how attractive. Some of them almost fainted. แล้วก็เมื่อหญิงสาวเนี่ยได้มาเห็นความสง่างามของพิชนาพิชนาหล่อมากจนคนหญิงสาวที่เห็นเนี่ยก็เป็นลมไปทั้งบางคนเป็นลม And their hair became slack, and their clothes slacker, and they forgot where they were. So Krishna asked the people of Mathura, he said, "Where is the place of the sacrifice?" And Kamsa had arranged for a, a special sacrifice called the Danur Yagya. And he had put a big bowl just near the sacrificial altar. That bow was very big and wonderful. It was like a rainbow in the sky. And this bow was protected by many different uh, policemen and watchmen. They were all Kamsa's workers. มีการดูแลรักษาโดยตำรวจแล้วก็หน่วยรักษาความปลอดภัยมากมายจำนวนหลายคนที่ทำงานให้คำสั่ So Krishna and Balaram came there, and when they came there, all the workers, the policemen and the watchmen, they told Krishna and Balaram, "Don't go near, don't touch anything." But Krishna just ignored them. และขณะที่ Krishna และ Balaram กำลังเดินผ่านตรงนั้นเนี่ยทุกคนเนี่ยก็He went up to the bow and he took the bow in his left hand. And many people came around to watch, and they saw Krishna. He, he strung the bow. He joined. He put the string across the bow. And when he drew the string, when he drew the string, then the bow the bow broke right in the middle into two pieces. So Krishna. Krishna broke the bow very easily, just like an elephant will break sugar cane when it goes into the field of sugar cane. It can pick up a stick, a pick up a stick of sugar cane will break it very easily. So everyone who was there, they all appreciated Krishna's power. Wow, Krishna is so powerful! He pick up the bow and he could string it. Now he's broken it. But when the, when Krishna broke the bow, it made a loud sound. It was a cracking sound. It filled the sky. And that sound was heard by King Kamsa. And when Kamsa heard what had happened, then he was very afraid for his life. So the people who were taking care of the bow, they were standing watching. They became very angry. 
ทุกคนที่เจ้าหน้าที่ที่ดูแลคันธนูนี้อยู่เนี่ยเขาก็รู้สึกรู้สึกโมโหมาก And so then they came rushing towards Krishna with they were holding weapons in their hands and they rushed towards Krishna. And they were saying, "Arrest him! Arrest him! Kill him! Kill him!" So Krishna and Balaram were surrounded by these angry, nasty people. So, so when they saw these people become angry, then Krishna and Balaram became angry. So Krishna and Balaram each took a half of the, because the bow had been broken into two pieces. So Krishna took one piece, Balaram took the other piece, and they used the bow to beat all of Kansa's caretakers. And Kamsa had sent some of his soldiers there to help the caretakers. So you've got the caretakers and Kamsa's soldiers. They were all attacking Krishna and Balaram, but Krishna and Balaram defeated all of them and killed them. So after this, Krishna didn't go any further. Then he came out of the sacrificial arena. They'd made a nice resting camp for themselves, so Krishna and Balaram are going to go and stay there with the cowherd boys. And on, on the way, he was able to visit many different places in Mathura to see the different sites in Mathura. So all, all the activities and the strength of Krishna was heard. All the news was, trend, was spread all over Mathura. All the people of Mathura were hearing about what Krishna had done. So they began to. Th the, all the people in Mathura were thinking, these two brothers, they must be demigods. They've come to Mathura. So they gave them a lot of respect and honor. They, they were very nice to them. So the two brothers, Krishna and Balaram, and all the cowherd boys, they're walking in the street. They didn't worry about Kamsa's laws and orders. So it gradually became, the sun was going down, it was getting dark, so Krishna and Balaram and the cowherd boys, they all went back to the place where their carts were parked. The cart was parked on the outskirts of the city. 
ปรากฏว่ารถเนี่ยรถที่มากับบัวเนี่ยก็เอาไว้จอดไว้ทั้งหมด but, น้ำ but Krishna and, Krishna and Balaram they gave a warning they by their activities in that one day they showed they gave a warning to Kamsa Because Kamsa was, he had called Krishna and Balaram to come to Mathura, and he'd arranged a wrestling match. He was planning how to kill Krishna and Balaram. He was thinking, "I'll bring Krishna and Balaram here to Mathura and have them killed." But what's going to happen is Kamsa is going to be killed. Not Krishna and Balaram, but Kamsa is the one who's going to be killed. So, Kamsa has to be very careful. He has, he knows that the next day, it, it's going to be it's not going to be so easy for him to to, to kill Krishna and Balaram. So Krishna and Balaram had come from Vrindavan to Mathura. So the people of Vrindavan they were thinking that all oh, the people of Mathura are very fortunate. And they're going to see. The beauty, they will see the wonderful beauty of Krishna. They're so fortunate. The people of Mathura are so fortunate. They'll be able to see Krishna. And Krishna is worshipped by his god, by the goddess of fortune. And Krishna is worshipped by his pure devotees. So the people of Vrindavan, they, they were so fortunate. They were the, actually the most fortunate because they used to see Krishna every day. But now it was the turn of the people of Mathura, and they were got able to see Krishna, and they were very satisfied seeing Krishna. So when Krishna got back to his camp. He was taken care of by all the the, the servants there. They, they gave him a nice seat, and they fed him milk and nice foodstuffs to take. And so Krishna took his supper, and he was thinking about the next day's program. So Krishna is not in any anxiety about the program. He s very peaceful. He took a good night's rest. So Krishna passed the night there. But on the other side, Kamsa was not peaceful. But on the other side, Kamsa was not peaceful. 
he was in great anxiety. Because he had heard that the eighth son of Devaki was born to kill him. And Narada Muni had told Kamsa that the son of Vasudeva is actually Krishna, that he is the eighth son. He is the one who is going to kill you. So Kamsa wants to, he, he's trying to make arrangements to save his life. But now Krishna has come to Mathura and Kamsa gets the news about Krishna's activities. The one, Kamsa had that big bow and Krishna just broke it very easily. And Krishna killed all those people taking care of the bow and all the soldiers of Kamsa who Kamsa had sent there. Krishna killed them all. So Kamsa was getting some understanding about the power of the Supreme Personality of God. He could understand the eighth son of Devaki had appeared and now his death was very close. So he was very restless the whole night, could not sleep. And he had, he had a lot of inauspicious visions. He saw all kinds of horrible, inauspicious things. And he could, underst he could understand Krishna and Balaram. They were actually his messengers. They had come to give him a message of death. Well, Kamsa had bought, he had brought them there to the city, he brought them there, so it's his fault. So Kamsa saw all kinds of inauspicious things, even when he was awake, as well as when he was dreaming. Everything was just so frightening and horrible. When he would look in the mirror, he could not see his head. His head was there, but he couldn't see it in the mirror. There was no reflection. And when he saw the sun and the moon in the sky, he would see them double. He wouldn't see one, he would see them double. Then he, he would see in his shadow, he would see holes in his shadow. And there was a buzzing, a very big, loud buzzing sound in his ears. 
แล้วก็ในก็จะได้ยินเสียงดังกระหงหยุดภายในหูของตัวเอง And all the trees appear to be covered of gold. And when he walked on the ground in the dust or in the muddy clay, he could not see any footprints. He didn't leave any footprints. And in his dream, when he would dream, he would see different kinds of ghosts, and they were carried carried in a carriage, pulled by donkeys. And he dreamed somebody gave him poison. He was drinking it. Then he dreamed that he was going naked with a garland of flowers. And he had smearing oil all over his body. So Kamsa saw all, all of these different signs of death, both when he was awake and when he was sleeping. So he could understand that his death was going to come very soon. So he could not get any sleep that night. He could not take any rest. So the next morning, he makes arrangements for the wrestling match. So the wrestling arena was, was like a big stadium, and it was all cleaned and decorated with flags and flowers. And they announced the wrestling match by beating the drums, and everybody knew when they heard these drums, they knew, oh, there's going to be a wrestling match. So it was very well arranged, very nice art decoration. Everything looked very beautiful. And they had different seats for all the different people because there, some were kings and brahmanas and kshatriyas, so they all had to get nice seats. So some of the kings they had they brought their thrones, and others they were given special seats. Then King Kamsa came with all of his entourage, all of his ministers and his secretaries. So he had a very special seat given for him. So he was sit he was sitting in the center of all of the big official all the, all of the important people. But his heart was beating very fast because he was very worried about his death. So 
So although Kamsa is very powerful, death doesn't care how powerful you are when death comes. Even powerful people have to die. So Kamsa was so powerful, but he was <laughs> so worried about death. So then the wrestlers came in to show their skill to all the crowd. They came in, they, they had their coaches with them also. And the wrestlers had all nice ornaments on them. They were very well dressed with nice cloth, big, you know, looking like very powerful, important people. And they were famous wrestlers. They were, their names were people like Chanura, Mustika, Shala, Kuta, Koshala, Toshala. So when they walked into the arena, then they, there was a lot of music and made it, you know, like the, you could see that, oh, this is to announce the arrival of the wrestlers. They played, the musical bands made nice music. So Nanda Maharaj was there with all the cowherd men and they were also welcomed by Kamsa. And Kamsa had come from Vrindavan, he brought a lot of milk products as presents for King Kamsa. So they presented Kamsa with the milk and the yogurt and the butter and the cheese and the ghee. And then they were given their seats and they were put by the side of King Kamsa. So, so they were given also a nice seat, a special seat for Nanda Maharaj because he's the king of the cowherd people. So now everything is ready for the wrestling match. But Krishna and Balaram have not come in yet. They have not entered yet. So we'll hear what happens in the next chapter. Okay, are there any questions? This lady Kubja, it's described, actually she is a, in Krishna, she is an expansion of one of Krishna's very uh, dear wives, Satya Bhama. You can understand, she must be a very special devotee because she had such a nice relationship with Krishna. 
เราก็เข้าใจได้ว่านาเนี่ยเป็นสาวกที่พิเศษมากมากของกิชนา She also has conjugal love relationship with Krishna, but her love for Krishna is not like the love of the gopis. She has a lot of lust in her desire for enjoying Krishna. And the gopis, they don't have that lust in their feeling for Krishna. They have pure love. So pure love is, they simply want to please Krishna. They're not thinking of themselves. But Krishna is teaching us an important point that if you want to get something, you want to get something from Krishna, you want to get blessings from Krishna, first you should serve Krishna. Okay, so there's a couple of hands up, so we'll hear the questions. Okay. Okay. Yogi Maji, your hand is up first. You want to go ahead. Thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna Gurudev, my humble obeisances. Gurudev, I wanted to ask you, um, first of all, I was going to just ask about Gupta, how fortunate of her. Just, she served the Lord and so much mercy. Thank you so much, Gurudev. And you just mentioned she was actually Satya Bama. Gurudev, but the, it makes me really wonder, I mean, that means, isn't that a material desire that she had, but she was still at the position of Satya Bama, a pure devotee, Lord's wife? How is that happening, Gurudev? I mean, I'm not clear, I'm sorry. It's just, um, she had a material desire, lusty desire to enjoy herself, not the Lord. And she was still accepted as the Queen of the Lord. I mean, maybe I'm not getting it clear, Gurudev. Can well, you please explain well, this? Well, you have to understand she's not coming as such Obama. She, but she may have... She's an expansion coming from Satya Bama, but it doesn't mean she has the same mood as Satya Bama. Oh, okay. Mm, mm. Okay, got it, got it. Okay. Mm. But thank you really so very much, Gurudev, for bringing that up. It was really amazing. Really. And Gurudev, the second thing is, when Lord Krishna entered uh, Mathura, he was already in the Vasube form that entered as Lord Krishna. But even the Vrindavan Masis were with him. There was no difference in, uh, they couldn't feel any difference that this is not the same Shama Sundar Krishna who was with us in Vrindavan. I mean, they couldn't tell of the difference, is it? Well, because as Vasu, although he's Vasudev Krishna, he would appear in a two-armed form. Mm. Okay, so even among the gopis, only Radharani could tell the difference, right? She well, could feel the difference. it's not that Radharani could tell the difference, it's Krishna could not hide himself from Radharani. Ah. He could, okay. hide, himself, he could hide himself from the gopis, but he couldn't mm. hide himself from Radharani. Okay, good. So I became clear on this point. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Gurudev. Archana. ผมคําถามของมาตรีนะคะมาตรีก็ถามว่าโอ้ท่านสัตยบามถ้าเกิดว่าคนหญิงสาวหลังความเนี้ยเป็นเป็นคนนี้เป็นอวตารของสัตย
เอ่อตรงนี้เนี่ยความต้องการของเขามันก็เลยต่างออกมาอย่างนี้แหละก็บอกว่าแล้วพิชนาเนี่ยต่างกันไหมชามสุนดาที่มาที่มาทุรากับชามสุนดาที่อยู่ที่เบนดาบันปุรมาก็บอกว่าเอ่อถ้าแล้วรารามีเป็นคนเดียวไหมที่รู้ถึงความแตกต่างนี้อะไรแต่เนี่ยเอ่อปุรมาบอกความจริงเนี่ยคือพิชนาเอ่อกับพวกบูปีเนี่ยพิชนายังแอบซ่อนตัวตนของตัวเองได้แต่ว่าสมเวลาพิชนามาต่อหน้ารารามีแล้วเนี่ยพิชนาจะไม่สามารถแอบซ่อนตัวตนของตัวเองได้แล้วก็ก็เลยทําให้รารามีแบบว่าดูได้อ่าฮะโอเคคุณมาเน็กส์เน็กส์ปัญหาของชายมาดูโอเคอาริคิชนาพรุมหาราชดานวะกานามที่สักเซมัยฮัมบูอบิซิสโอคอริทูสิลาปบุบันอาจารย์ครับคำถามของพี่คือคนส่วนใหญ่ที่รู้จักกระดากปิชนาในเมืองไทยนะคะคนที่แบบเหมือนไม่ไม่ได้รู้เรื่องราวดังในแบบเราอะเขาจะเข้าใจในแบบไม่เข้าใจความรักทิพย์ของระหว่างดาดากับปิชนาเขาจะชอบเข้าใจว่าเหมือนดาดาดานีเนี่ยแบบไม่ได้แต่งงานกับปิชนาแล้วก็เป็นดูผู้หญิงที่แบบดูเศร้าโศกอะไรเงี้ยเนื่องจากว่ามีคนส่วนใหญ่ดูแบบซีรีส์อะไรเงี้ยค่ะก็เลยอยากให้คุณมหาราชไกด์ไลน์ให้หน่อยว่าเราจะสามารถเล่าให้คนฟังแบบไหนดีที่จะสรุปได้ง่ายแล้วก็เข้าใจง่ายในระหว่างความรักทิพย์ของดาดากับปิชนาค่ะเข้าใจดีไหมเข้าใจโอเคขอบคุณค่ะอาริกิชาเอ่อกูมาราชคำถามคือเอ่อ uh, normally when uh, people in Thailand when they know about Radha Krishna so by maybe by watching the series and all so what they always feel is like Radha Rani uh, didn't get married to Krishna so and she seemed to be a very sad woman that she didn't get her lover or something like that So how can we tell them that this is like is a transcendental love between Radha and Krishna? How how can she explain this to to them? Well, you have to explain to them that Radha and Krishna are actually one, and Radha Rani represents the pleasure energy of Krishna. ก็ให้พี่สามารถอธิบายคนไปได้ว่าความจริงเนี่ยราดากับพิชชาเนี่ยเป็นหนึ่งเดียวกันแต่ว่าราดาเนี่ยเป็นส่วนที่แบ่งแยกออกมาเพื่อให้ความสุขกับพิชชา and when she looks sad or unhappy that is actually her transcendental ecstasy in being separate from Krishna แล้วเมื่อใดก็แล้วแต่ที่นางดูเหมือนว่านางเศร้าหรือว่านางไม่มีความสุขเนี่ยอันนั้นเนี่ยมันเป็นความปลื้มปิติสุขทิพในความทางเพลิน When she's separate from Krishna, when she feels the separation from Krishna, she becomes more absorbed. Her intense absorption in remembering Krishna is there. แต่เมื่อนางเนี่ยทางเพลินจากพิชนาเนี่ยไอความที่นางคิดถึงพิชนาเนี่ยมันมันเพิ่มปูนขึ้น And this is actually her ecstasy, which is very, very high level of transcend of spiritual consciousness. You have to understand that most people who are hearing these things, they don't even understand who they are. They still think they're the body. So they're not really qualified to understand the pastimes of Radha and Krishna. You want to go to the highest level. You, these people are going to the high, the pastimes of Radha and Krishna are on the. Highest level, they haven't even understood the most basic thing that they're not the body. So they're trying to understand the pastimes of Radha and Krishna on the material platform. They cannot understand that these are pastimes on the spiritual platform. Uh, 
ือเขาเขาก็เลยเวลาได้ยินเรื่องราวของดาราคริสต์นาเนี่ยเขาก็จะนํามันมาปรับใช้หรือมาปรับคิดแบบที่เป็นวัตถุไม่ใช่แบบที่ What appears to be suffering on the spiritual platform is actually the greatest happiness อะไรก็แล้วแต่ที่มันดูเหมือนว่าเป็นความเศร้าทุกข์ทรมานในทางวัตถุเนี่ยความจริงแล้วมันเป็นความสุขเวลาอยู่ที่โลกทิพย์มันเป็นความสุขสูงสุด So the material world is the perverted reflection of the spiritual world เพราะว่าโลกวัตถุนี้เนี่ยมันเป็นเงาสะท้อนมาเป็นภาพสะท้อนมันก็เลยจะอับตาลปัด We are looking at the perverted reflection. We're not seeing the reality. สิ่งที่เราเห็นทั้งหมดทุกอย่างในโลกวัตถุนี้เนี่ยมันเป็นสิ่งที่กับตาลปัดเรายังไม่เห็นสิ่งที่มันเป็นมันเป็นของจริง Does that help you a little, Chaya? อันนี้พอช่วยให้พี่เข้าใจได้ไหมคะพอเข้าใจไหมคะชายาพี่ชายา Yes, Guru Maharaj. Uh, okay, I I understand and and I'm thinking uh, how to uh, writing about content to easy understanding to uh, about Thai people, Guru Maharaj. But um, I need to ask more about if they practice about um, praying Mahamantra and um, beginning to practice about about uh, four principle. They, I mean, it can uh, helping them to to uh, understand about Radha Krishna past time, Guru Maharaj. Yes, it would help them in the beginning. That's the beginning. You need to follow the four principles and chant the Maha Mantra. So that's the beginning. But they have to purify their consciousness. They have to hear more about Lord Krishna. Just like in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna begins to explain first of all about the difference between the body and the soul. Arjuna. ยิ่งมากก็คือเขาจะสามารถเข้าใจได้แต่ก็อย่างที่คริสนาบอกไว้ในพระวัตถิตาครับความรู้แรกหรือความรู้ส่วนแรกที่เขาควรมีก็คือความรู้ที่ว่าเขาเนี่ยไม่ใช่ร่างกายนี้แต่ว่าเป็นลมเนี่ยคริสนา doesn't immediately say surrender to me that comes at the end คริสนาไม่ได้บอกในตอนส่วนเริ่มว่าเกยกเลิกสัตว์ทั้งหลายและสิโลาสอกาอันนั้นเนี่ยคริสนาบอกในส่วนท้ายของพระวัตถิตา Krishna doesn't speak about Radharani in the Bhagavad Gita. Because that's the highest thing. It comes in the in the tenth canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam. When you go to see the king of Thailand. Where do you look first? You look first at his feet, right? You look down, you bow down to the king, and you look at the feet, and then gradually you look up towards his face. When we go to see Krishna, we should do like that. We should look at the feet and gradually look up to the face. So the Srimad Bhagavatam represents the form of Krishna. And the first two cantos are the lotus feet of Krishna. So first you study the lotus feet of Krishna, and then the tenth canto is the face of Krishna. 
ภาคแรกๆของพระวจนะไปก่อนเรื่อยๆแล้วภาคสิบเนี่ยเปรียบเสมือนกับเป็นพระพักของพิชนา So before you go to Srimad Bhagavatam, first you have to study Bhagavad Gita. Krishna begins the Bhagavad Gita telling, first of all, we're not the body, we are souls. Krishna doesn't speak about bhakti yoga in the beginning. It comes later. You have to go step by step. First thing is to understand who are you. You are not the body. You are a soul. Then what is the soul? The soul is a tiny part of Krishna. We have an eternal relationship with Krishna. We never become Krishna. Krishna is always Krishna, and we are always tiny parts of Krishna. Just like the hand is a part of the body. But if the hand is cut off from the body, hand is useless. So the same way, we are part of Krishna, but if we are cut off from Krishna, we are we are useless. We are just in the material world, lost. We are like little children, and we don't understand. Just like when you were a little child, maybe you would say to your mother, Where did I come from? So you're just a little child. You cannot understand about how you how you took birth in the womb and you came out from the womb. It's beyond the child to understand. In the same way, people are trying to understand Radha and Krishna. They cannot understand. They have, they have to first purify themselves. They have to chant Hare Krishna. They have to follow regulated principles. They have to hear about Krishna. Then gradually they can come to understand who is Krishna. Then, after. A lot of purification. They may understand who is Radha. So it's nice you're trying to preach to them. You should encu you should encourage them to read our Krishna book. ก็ดีนะคะที่พี่พยายามบอกผู้คนเกี่ยวกับตรงนี้ก็เ
If they will read our Krishna book carefully, they can understand. They have to read the book from the beginning. The problem is most people are very lazy. They don't want to read. They just want to sit and watch television. They want entertainment. They and they want to see everything in a material way. They want to see mundane love. Love in the material world is just lust, it is not pure. อาจารย์ค่ะอาจารย์อ่าการที่คุณบุญมาแล้วบอกว่าเราเริ่มมองจากอบาทรูปหลวงปู่ของปิชนากรแล้วถึงจะไล่ขึ้นไปจนถึง
and this expansion of hers is known as Prithivi, which means the earth. Earth. Yes. And that, and she, she was, the fact that she's bent, you know, Kupshya was all bent, she's bent yeah. down by the great burden of all the wicked kings who were burdening ah, the planet. Okay. Mm. So Lord mm. Krishna came to remove all these wicked rulers and straighten out the hunchback. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Gurudev, thank you very much. Gurudev, I, I'm sorry, um, I had one more question, Gurudev. May I? Yeah. Okay. Gurudev, uh, on out of context this is, but say uh, Lord Chaitanya, after Lord Chaitanya came down, that means Lord Krishna had the feeling of Srimati Radharani, how much he loves him and how deep it is. So, you know how uh, uh, we always say Lord Krishna's heart is not as soft as uh, Lord Chaitanya, of course, it's not as soft as Lord Chaitanya, but it's much softer than before, we can say, right? Because after he came down as Lord Chaitanya, his feelings must have, in terms of love, grown. And because he must have known how the people feel and, I mean, you know, the whole situation I'm trying to say, so his love may have increased, right? But, but, but you have to understand why Lord Chaitanya comes down. Mm -hmm. Lord Chaitanya comes down to experience the mood of Radharani. Mm -hmm. Right? He's, he doesn't come as Krishna, but he's Radha Bhava Juti Suvalitam. He's, 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 he's Krishna who comes with the complexion of Radha and the sentiment of Radha. He comes to experience that mood of Radharani. Mm. Because Radharani, Rad, Srimati Radharani is getting the greatest pleasure in her relationship with Krishna. So Krishna mm. is, he wants to experience that pleasure which she gets. Mm. That's what I'm just saying. So after having experienced the pleasure that she gets, can we say that he may have mellowed down a bit more? I mean, I'm just, you know. Sorry, Gurudev, I'm only asking because... Uh, well, well, Lord Chaitanya this. only, he, he got that mood of Radha in his sannyas, uh -huh. after taking sannyas. Ah, oh. okay. Mm. So that means there should be no difference, can we say, Lala, in the mood of Lord Krishna as he is? Just want to taste the love of Radharani, that's it. Well, he came also to establish the Yuga Dharma, the Sankirtan, mm. and at the same time to taste it himself. Mm. So okay, externally, okay. externally, his reason mm -hmm. was to establish the Yuga Dharma, but uh -huh. in, internally, the reason was to experience the mood of Srimati Radharani. Okay, so best be, I mean, I best not think about if there's any change. I mean, this is a topic that's totally transcendental. Nothing for people like me to comment on or think about, right? Yeah. Okay, good. Understood. Thank you so much, Guru. Thank you. Okay. Yes, okay. Vaishnava Bhavani has a question. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay, I don't know. Is she there? Vaishnava Bhavani? Oh, Vaishnavi Mataji. Yeah, he is not here anymore. I think maybe uh, internet. Oh, she is here. She is here. Okay, Vaishnavi Mataji. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Yes, Hare Krishna. My, hum my humble obeisances. My my question is: uh, When uh, Krishna entered Madura, he met the washerman, and he refused to give the cloth for Krishna because of bad association. 
I was thinking the Akrura and the, the, the florists, they were not affected by bad association. So I was thinking how uh, we are also dealing with so many people, non-devotees all the time. How can we be careful from bad association like that? And my second question is, did uh, Krishna really went to Kumja's house after that? And um, I was thinking even though Kumja uh, had uh, lusty desires, she didn't go to any other man. She went to Krishna and maybe because of that gradually her lusty desires will go away. Is it like that? Guru Maharaj, my understanding is correct? Yes, well, first of all, uh, to counter a the association, bad association, you have to do good sadhana. You have to protect yourself from bad association by regularly chanting and hearing. Mm. Okay. Uh, uh, การเข้าผ่าสมาคมที่ไม่ดีแต่เขาก็ยังรักษาความเป็นสาวกไม่ได้แต่บางคนก็เป็นคนที่ไม่ดีไปเลยเพราะว่าการเข้าผ่าสม
they, you know, they, they were very advanced. They, Ramananda Rai and Swarup Damodar, they're gopis in, in Krishna Leela, and so they were intimate associates of Radharani, and they knew about her, you know, her moods, and they could understand Lord Chaitanya, and they could help Lord Chaitanya to cultivate more the mood of Srimati Radharani. Swarup Damodar would sing songs which would bring out more the mood of Srimati Radharani. And so nobody else could understand, only Lord Chaitanya and Swarup Damodar could understand what was going on. But, you know, they're, because they're, they're special, Lord Chaitanya is in the mood of Srimati Radharani and Swarup Damodar is Lalita or Vishaka and like that. So he, he's taking the association from them. And they help him to relish more this mood of Radha Bhav. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Mm. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Okay. 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 Arjuna, no more yes. questions? Uh, no, Guru Dev. So I will just quickly translate that. Okay. Come talk for Mother Dina Ha Tam อวตารของพระองค์เจ้าเจริญญาณที่มาเพื่อที่จะประสบการณ์เกี่ยวกับความรักของดารานีเนี่ยว่ามันต่างต่างจากการจากการแค่รับรู้เฉยๆไหมการ